Welcome to Code of Bears Lunch and Learn. Today's topic is customizing a basic SSRS report. First thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to view the report inside of Epicor. So I'm going to go to Sales Management, Order Management, Reports, and click on Scheduled Shipments. Now because I'm using the education database, there's a lot of data in here, so I'm going to limit my date range just for our purposes of testing to 1-1 of 2009. Now you look down here and you'll notice that there's a standard SSRS report, or a report style. And I'm also going to set the archive to one day, and I'll tell you why in just a little bit. Then we're going to print preview this report. So the reason that we want to archive this is when the report runs, uh, Epicor is actually putting the data into a separate database so that you can rerun it. I'm going to hide my tools here. When uh, the report is run, if you don't archive the report, then that data will uh, be cleaned out immediately. Since we're going to be developing a new report, we're going to want to be able to use that same data, so I chose to archive it. So here's an example of a simple basic report, and we'll be customizing this to add a logo and, and uh, move some fields around. I'm going to close that. Now the first thing we need to do is go and find out what report style this is using. That is found under System Management, Reporting, and then go to Report Styles. Now since my report is called Scheduled Shipments, I'm going to search for a report style that starts with S. Down here I have my Scheduled Ship report styles. Right now there's just the one standard SSRS defined. You'll notice down here this is a uh, SQL Server reporting report, not a crystal report. And its report location is reports scheduled shipments report slash scheduled ship. Where that actually appears is SQL Server Reporting Services has a portal, and I'm going to take you there right now. And this would be the reports directory. So this is my instance. I'm going to go into reports, and then I'm going to hide this window, and I'm going to browse down to scheduled shipments. Scheduled Shipments Report, and inside of here I've got my Sched Ship Report. That's the top one there. Now the other report that's sitting here is a sub-report of the first report. So in order to make changes, I'm going to actually need to uh, copy both of these guys. I want to leave the original report alone. So in order to do that with SSRS portals, you can hover over the report and you'll get a drop-down. And I can download that into my Downloads folder. I'm going to choose to save that. And then I'm going to download the sub-report as well. And then we're going to open the folder. So you can see I've got my SkedShip RDL, which is Report Definition Language, and my SkedShip Transfer Orders RDL, which is the sub-report. So I've got both of those downloaded to my download folder. I'm going to close this dialog. I'm going to go back up to the instance area, and I'm going to create a new folder for my reports to exist in. So for our purposes, I'm just going to call this LNL for Lunch and Learn. And if I wanted, I could have a description on there. Then inside of the LNL folder, I'm going to create a folder for this report. So this is Sked Shipments. Now I can upload my two files into this, this folder. And we'll upload the sub report. All right. So now I've got a copy of the reports sitting in a directory for me. Now to work with this report, uh, the first thing that I want to do is actually edit it in Report Builder. Report Builder is a free tool that comes with SSRS and it is built into the website. It's a click once deployment application. So when I go to deploy it, it's going to download, as you see. 
and then it will start up. And because I had a report selected, that report should automatically be loaded inside of Report Builder. I do have to tell it to run. All right, so we've got Report Builder and it's opened up with this report. Now I'm going to expand it so that we've got some more room to work with. So the first thing that we want to do is I would like to add a logo to this report. So you'll see this little bar here. That's kind of my the indicator that I've got a report header up here in this area. So I'm actually going to highlight everything in the report header. And I'm just going to push those down out of the way for the moment. Now to add a logo, I'm going to come over to my images, right click and say add an image. I'm going to go to my downloads area and I'm going to choose to download the CBI logo. I can then take this and drop it into the area and if I wanted to change the type of image or give it a, a tool tip for when it's browsed over the internet I could. So perhaps I put CBI logo, hit OK, and you'll notice it drops in where I left it. Now this will auto resize, so as I drag it, it's sizing things accordingly. If I shrink it up, down, so it keeps the perspective. And I can kind of put this in the center area. So now I want to preview my report to make sure that this looks OK. In order to do that, You'll notice when I hit run, the one thing that I need is a table GUID. Now this is new in Epicor 10, and this uses uh, the GUIDs that I was talking about where Epicor has stored the information into that separate database. So how you can go about finding that is come back to Epicor, then go to Business Activity Queries. I'm going to bring up a business activity query or BAQ. Now I've got a query defined that actually uh, starts or uh, searches the GUIDs that are defined in the ICE table or ICE framework tables so that I can find out that information. So I'm going to actually execute this query. All right, and you'll see I've got scheduled shipments uh, report up here and the report that was run. And this GUID is what I want to actually grab. So I'm going to highlight it. I will copy and then I can come back over here to Report Builder and paste that in. I can then click the View Report button and my report should load. And you'll notice now I've got my Code of Bears template up here. And this is using the same filters and everything uh, that I had from the original report run. So I've still got just the report, just the shipments that were scheduled on or before 1-1 of 2009. Let's go back to design. And just to make this go faster, I'm going to come in to my parameters on my table good, and I'm going to set a default value. This way I just don't have to paste it in every time that I run it. So if I hit run, that value is automatically filled in and now we can view our report. So switching back to design mode. The other thing I may want to add is some static text. So like terms and conditions. This bar down here that I can change, uh, this separates my footer area. So what I'm going to do to add my terms and conditions below my report, let's go under the insert and I'll want to insert a text box and I'm just going to draw a text box area and I can type in a terms and conditions that I want. I'm just going to type in some bogus text I'm going to click off of the area. So I've still got my text box there. If I wanted to, I could resize my text box so that it's kind of, whoops, I moved it. 
I could resize it so that it fits into the area that the text is, and then I can bring my report footer up. When I hit run, I do have multiple pages of results, and since I told my text to appear at the end of the grid, you'll notice it's down here on the bottom. Now you do have some basic formatting features. Um, I can change it into bold if I wanted to change the color to make it look a little bit different, change the font size, perhaps not that large. Very easy to change and add text. Let's say, for example, uh, that I am looking to remove a field from here. In this case, this field is the job number field. And you'll see that he exists. in this job area under the firm column. So I want to actually change that field. I'm going to remove it. So I'm going to highlight and I can just hit delete to take that field away. Now when I hit run, and sometimes you do get this data cache not valid. That's okay just click the view report again. It means it's trying to refresh the information and it couldn't. So notice my job value and my warehouse value are no longer filled in. Now if I want, I could actually come in here, insert a row of details, and because my stuff is kind of tight here, I'm going to drag my footer down and make sure that my sub report and my terms and conditions are definitely below my table of information here. Now I want to put my uh, job number in here. In order to do that, when I hover over the field, you'll notice I get a little drop down and I can put the job prod job num in here. If I click run, Again, I'm getting my cache. I'll hit OK. Click the view report again. And you'll notice for the first run, I do have the job number in here. The other items in the list were using the uh, warehouse instead of the job number, and there was a formula associated with that. So I would need to put that whole formula back in in order to get the warehouses to show up where I've got the job number here. So now I want to actually use this report. Well, first off, I'm going to flip back to design mode. I need to save this because until you save it, uh, you're actually working with just an in-memory copy. When I save it, now it's saved up onto the report portal. And if I want, I'm going to go in, grab my table GUID, and when I close report builder, I can then click on the report inside of the designer or inside of the portal and you'll notice my report comes up. Now it left the default table GUID in for me here. From here we're going to close the portal and we don't need our business activity query anymore so I'll minimize that. So now we need to get this report into our menu. So how we do that is by going under the report styles again, which I still have. So I've got a report style for the scheduled shipments. So now I want to create a new report style. We're going to call this LNL Sched Shipment. This is a SQL Server reporting. It uses the scheduled shipment definition. Our output location will be database. And our report location, this is where we need to come back to our portal. So the other report existed in the reports folder. Ours exists in LNL 
sked shipments, sked ship. I'm going to close this dialog. Come back to report maintenance. So our report location is LNL slash sked shipments slash sked ship. I can then save that report definition. Well, I'm going to get Internet Explorer out of the way here. Now I'm going to go back to my scheduled shipments report and tell it to reload. So I'll come back up here to sales management, order management reports, scheduled shipments. And now in my drop down report style, you'll notice I've got a lunch and learn sked shipment. And if I print, I've got to change the date. Otherwise, we're going to get too much information. Print preview. And you'll notice we've now got a report uh, that has our logo in it. You'll notice that the job number is included here. It is no longer on the job tag and the warehouses. So this is a very basic way to customize reports. You can do a, a heck of a lot more. Uh, there's many, many opportunities for what you can do with reports. There's still all the power that you had previously with Crystal. You do have that inside of SSRS. I hope you enjoyed today's Lunch and Learn. Thank you very much for your time.